What's happening, my brothers and sisters of iron? PK here in the Fringe Sport Gym in Austin, Texas, and I'm about to talk to you about mixing rubber and iron plates on the same bar. Can I do it? We'll find out about that in a minute. First, I wanna ask you, I wanna invite you, I wanna extend the invitation to join us on Facebook in our private Facebook group, Garage Gym Revolution. It is a group full of positivity and community for people who are changing their lives through strength. Please join me. And also, give us a follow on Instagram, at Fringe Sport. All right, let's get to the meat of this. We get this question a lot at Fringe. Can I mix rubber and iron on my bar? The short answer is, if you have great rubber bumper plates, like the type that we sell here at Fringe Sport, absolutely, you can mix rubber bumper plates and iron on your bar. The slightly longer answer is that yes, you can mix rubber and iron, but you gotta think about what you're doing and how much you are mixing. So quick story on that. Back when I was 15 years younger and I was first starting to build out my garage gym, I only had enough money to afford iron plates. So I used them for a long time. My first pair of bumpers that I got was a pair of 25 pound Krayberg bumper plates. And I had this very same question that you did. So what I did is I just mixed rubber and iron until I had problems. And what happened there is I would tend to have problems when I would have two pairs of 25s on the bar and then I would have another 100 pounds on each side that was made out of iron. Then you'd start to see some wobbliness and some wonkiness. So that's the first thing that you have to think about. If you're mixing rubber and iron, well, are you mixing a couple of 45 pound rubber plates and then some iron change plates of like 10 or five pounds? If that's the case, you're never gonna have any problem. On the other hand, if you're doing the opposite of that, if you've got a pair of 25 pound rubber plates on the bar and you're supplementing with dozens or hundreds of pounds of iron on the end, well, of course you're gonna run into problems because you've got this thin strip of rubber that's having to support hundreds of pounds. So that's the very first thing to keep in mind. What are you doing? Are you having a ton of rubber and a little bit of iron or a ton of iron and a little bit of rubber? In that latter case, you're gonna run into a few problems. You guys might be wondering why I'm kneeling over this barbell. Well, we have got the exact same amount of weight on this side of the bar as on this side of the bar, except on this side, we have a 10 pound rubber bumper plate. And on this side, we have a 55 pound rubber bumper plate. So you can see exactly what we were talking about before. So over here, we've got a bunch of iron stacked up, supported by this very thin lip of rubber. So what's gonna happen when this bar gets lifted and then if it gets dropped is you've got a very small contact point of the rubber with the ground that's gonna have to take all of that force and it may not take it all that well. Now this is a fringe sport bumper that's designed for abuse, so I wouldn't worry about it in this case, but you can definitely see how we've got a lot of iron and only a little bit of rubber. Now over on this side of the bar, we've got a nice thick bit of rubber that has got a large contact patch to hit the ground and then only a little bit of iron on here. So even if this was not a good quality bumper, I would not worry about lifting and dropping this. The number two thing to think about is, are you dropping that bar? So if you're doing squat and you're mixing a ton of rubber and iron, but you're never dropping that bar on the ground, you continue to re-rack into the rack, well, you're never gonna run into a problem because you're not actually putting stress on the rubber there. On the other hand, are you cleaning? Are you jerking? Are you snatching and then dropping? If that's the case, then yes, you are putting a lot more stress on the rubber there. That said, even if you're doing that, putting a lot more stress on the rubber, you can still mix iron onto the bar with the rubber bumper plates as long as you're not going crazy. I would suggest for a quick rule of thumb, try to keep the iron on the bar to about 20 to 30% or less of the rubber that's on that bar. So you absolutely can mix rubber and iron on the bar. Just think about it for a minute and see what you're gonna do before you do that. I've done it for decades now, 
of mixing and I've never had a problem as long as I've thought about it a little bit beforehand. So did you like what you saw here? Give us a like, give us a comment. I read all the comments or tell a friend, subscribe to our channel. I'd also invite you once more to join us at Garage Gym Revolution on Facebook for positivity and community and follow us at at Fringe Sport on Instagram. I think you know what I'm gonna say. Go out there and lift heavy, lift happy.